when you find something that moves you, you will find means and ways to solve that problem. And the jobs of the future are not going to be about how much you know. It's about how are you going to use the knowledge that you have to have an impact on the society. The best short films for lifelong learning recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love with your host, Richard Lee. 90% of our learning is informal learning. It's in the environment we are in. It's the, the internet, the conversation, the people. 10% is textbooks. So if 90% is, is learning from the world around us, how can we make sure that we create that environment of the circular learning for them so that they can observe, watch, and then translate the learning from there? And, it, and it's hands-on. It's actually something, I think one of the students made a comment that, you know, so much of, so much of the learning we do is, is quite disconnected. It's, it's quite abstract. But what you're talking about is something that's project-based. It's something that they, we need to have a solution or an answer or a problem that gets solved right now. You, you touched on a very interesting point about the learning. They, they joined the program to learn about STEM and the science and innovation. They learn about getting to meetings on time. They learn about time management. They learn about talking to people who are not your friends, but a, almost in some ways a stranger. They learn about building a rapport with somebody who is there to impart some sort of knowledge uh, to you. You learn about managing your homework and your school sports and your assignments and something new and exciting. Uh, you start learning how to communicate, re-communicating with your family and explaining to them something which is uniquely different to what you're doing in school and your communication skills develop. So all this learning sort of comes along the way. So we find that the 12-week program gives them enough uh, space to, to work on this. The other fascinating thing that's come out of that is not every project as a part of the Brainstorm Innovation Challenge is uh, is the one that will go through becoming a product and starting a company and becoming entrepreneurs. But the ones that do, we are continuing them on that journey. Uh, and there have been examples of uh, teams that have gone and presented at MedTech's Got Talent and landed up in the top 20 across the whole country. Uh, they've gone and spoken at the STEM conference and presented the idea beyond brainstem. So we try and continue the learning for the students well beyond the program, depending on how much they want to take it forward. One of the big ideas that Sid and I talked about is best explained in his first recommended short film called The Fourth Industrial Revolution. The original Industrial Revolution was driven by the discovery that you could use steam engines to do all kinds of interesting things. But that was followed by additional revolutions for electricity and computers and communications technology. We're now in the early stages of the fourth industrial revolution, which is bringing together digital, physical, and biological systems. One of the features of this fourth industrial revolution is that it doesn't change what we are doing, but it changes us. This documentary, prepared by the World Economic Forum, and they have this, uh, the conference every year, explains in very simple terms, without making you feel overwhelmed about how the technology is moving, to make you understand, and it's by humanizing that this is where the world is heading. And it opens up your mind um, to the possibility of thinking in the future that if that's what is happening around the world, then we should be preparing for that sooner rather than later. It also reminds me of how, you know, I was speaking to a young friend of mine and he said, I couldn't imagine living in a more exciting time. You know, there's this sort of paradox that we're living in of there's so many opportunities and so many possibilities, but it's really hard. So, And I think that this this piece particularly goes to the optimism and the pessimism of it all, you know, this this dichotomy of... It's, it's an amazing time that we're living in, isn't it? It is. And also, I think uh, quite often people get challenged by technology, that the machines are taking over, the robots are taking over, we are going to lose our jobs. But if you, if you see, there are moments in that, in, that, in that film where there's a lady, uh, there's a woman who is working in a factory in the US, in a car factory, and she breaks it down and she says, the machines are there to do things, to do things quickly, 
But then we come and program them and we make sure that the programming is done properly so that they do their work a lot quicker. We, we help the machines almost. We help the machines, <laughs> that's right. And I think that shift in understanding that, uh, you know, that machines are not replacing us. Well, some jobs are being replaced, of course. But they, they, you have to find that thing for yourself uh, where you are controlling the machines and not the other way around. Let me move on to another one that you've chosen called Dotty. Now, you need to find the letter E. E. It's on the number three. E. Here number it is. Three. Here it is. Good. Oh, it's going to put an F in there. It's okay. No, it's not. No, look, it's, uh, it's okay, really. It's what's supposed to happen. Look, it's called... It's called predictive. It predicts what word you want to say. Well, it didn't do a very good job. It predicted if when I want to say hello. But if we keep going, it'll sort itself out. I promise. It, it does a number of things for me, this film. It's, it's so relatable, but it, ch it raises the challenge of, of good um, you know, user interface, good design, making things that are readable for everyone. Where did you find this film? What drew you to it? Why did you want to share this one? So I'm a huge advocate of storytelling. And I think that one thing that we don't really teach um, kids in school is the art of great storytelling. This film, I came across it uh, in, my, in my health tech entrepreneurial travels. And it was an event that I was organizing and it was on effective uh, human-centered design in HK. And this sh film was played and uh, it highlighted the fact that sometimes uh, we, by function of the world and the time we live in, we make the assumption that technology can solve all the problems. Sometimes the simplest of things can, can if we don't understand it, can, can be the biggest barrier in getting the message across. Uh, the reason why I like uh, Dotty is because the way that story is told is just beautiful. It shows us patience, it shows us resilience, it shows us compassion, it shows us uh, you know, in fact, even the, the, the person walking outside on, on the walker to demonstrate <laughs> how time is going by. Yes. Uh, you yeah. know, little, little things. And it's a, it's, they are what, three actors. That's it. Yeah. 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 You know, and yeah, it's that movie, that movie, it moves me every single time I watch it. Yeah. That's very clever. Yeah. It's a very clever <laughs> movie. Let me move on to another one that you've chosen called Blood from the Sky. Historically, blood delivery in the East African country has been plagued by long delays due to bad roads and the remoteness of many health facilities. The consequences are often tragic for patients in need of transfusions, including mothers giving birth, individuals undergoing surgery, and young victims of malaria. But Zipline's fleet of drones, which travel up to 100 kilometers per hour, can service more than half of Rwanda's district hospitals from a single launch site within 45 minutes of an order being placed. Thrust into the air by a system of bungee pulleys, the Zips follow a pre-programmed route using real-time kinetic satellite navigation. The reason why I like that story is because it shows you that when you when you find something that moves you and you know you can have an impact, you will find means and ways to solve that problem. And the jobs of the future are not going to be about how much you know or what all do you know. It's about how are you going to use the knowledge that you have to have an impact on the society. So you know we used to hire for ha we used to hire for hand the first sort of uh, revolution, the second was hire for head or, or, or how much you knew, and I think employers in the future are going to be hiring for heart in terms of what can you do with the skills that you have, and this is is a great example of you know they didn't go to uh, um, to the U S or to Australia or to New Zealand, they went to an African nation where they know that the help and the impact will be significant. Now they're obviously doing well and the UPS has partnered with them and they're, they're, the company is growing extremely well. But it all began with a very, very simple idea of getting something to somebody 
in the shortest possible time who needs it the most. Many of Rwanda's hospitals can take hours to reach along rutted dirt roads by car or motorbike. Emergency procurements of blood would often not arrive in time. I'm insanely optimistic about the future, that we know we are living the best possible time we ever can, and it's for us to go and grab it. In closing, all I would like to say is that, you know, we, we owe it to our future generations to, to create a much better world for them. And, uh, you know, I like the saying that, you know, if you want to go fast, you go alone, but if you want to go far, you go together. Yeah. Yeah. She'll get it. To listen to the full conversation, find Short Films Teachers Love on SoundCloud or wherever you get your podcasts. For extra notes or community support, join our Facebook group today. This show is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. To learn more, visit edupodcastnetwork.com.